Hello, I'm Frank Hannaway, and welcome to Big Journey, Small Steps. Well, I just want to say before I start that if you enjoyed last week's video about Sita, our new dog, there's some footage at the very end of this video that you might want to see. Um, this is a very serious and difficult topic for me to talk about today. And this is the fourth time I've made this video. And hopefully this is the uh, charm because it's very difficult. I want to talk to you about gender. I don't want to talk to you about transgender. I, I don't want to talk to you about people that are sure that they're the wrong gender. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about my experience and how gender stereotypes affected my life and how they're still continuing to affect people's lives even though we've come a long, long way. I grew up in a very small community. Um, my maternal side of the family had been here um, since 1885 and I live here now and my father's family came in, in in the 30s and growing up I knew just about everybody in town and I was related to at least half of them. There were some really clear expectations about what little boys do and what little girls do and I didn't fit. It wasn't a question of me wanting to be a different sex. I was perfectly happy being a boy. It just didn't make sense to me how people said boys were supposed to be. I was never aggressive. I didn't like rough and tumble play. I didn't like um, that sort of aggressive interchange that um, that typically boys have. In fact, when I started teaching and I started seeing that, I was just horrified. It took me a while to realize, oh, this is how boys normally act. <laughs> and I really let, I, it was kind of a joyful moment for me. I'm like, oh, they're just playing because it didn't feel like that to me when I was a kid. I thought it was genuine aggression. And when you think it's genuine aggression, it turns into genuine aggression. So growing up, I've said this recently to a few of my friends, there were these two baskets. There was a boy basket and a girl basket. And if you were a girl, you played with dolls. You There were certain things you could be. You could be a teacher. You could be a nurse. There, if you were a boy, you had all these wealth of possibilities as far as um, jobs were concerned. But you were supposed to like sports. You were supposed to like hunting and fishing in my town. Sita is exploring the room while I'm talking about this really serious topic. You were supposed to like hunting and fishing. You were supposed to like to fight and you were supposed to be ready to do that at any time. I rem And football was enormously important and it was high school football that was important here. And my parents would take me to football games and I could not care less about, I didn't even understand what they were doing out on the field, except I knew they were hitting each other. And I was fascinated by the cheerleaders and wanted to be one, and fascinated by the baton twirlers and wanted to be one, fascinated by the drum major, wanted to be one. Um, and, and honestly, for that day, my parents were enormously supportive because I'm still alive today. There were some families I could have been born into that it would have been much, much worse. And my parents did the very best they could. But as a result of me liking all these things that were termed girly or this word that I have come to really hate, which is sissy, um, I need to take that word back and own it. But um, 
I also got bullied at school because I was a very in-your-face kid and anything, I was just like super interested in everything and anything I was interested in, I was going to share it with you whether you thought it was horrible or not. So um, I got bullied really seriously in school and my parents' solution to that was I was supposed to fight the people that... Um, bullied me and that sounds really harsh today but when I look back on that it was kind of a matter matter of survival in those days that's how my father my father had grown up in uh, Chicago during prohibition and the depression and it was tough where he lived and you're you were expected to fight I mean there was no way out but I just never got it uh, my father would take me hunting, and I was horrified at killing birds. My poor father, he thought he had a son. He loved me dearly, too, but it, it just, it was tough on him. And I honestly don't think any of these things have, I didn't want to be a girl. I liked being a boy. Um, I liked the way boys looked. I liked all that stuff I just didn't my idea of what it meant to be a boy and other people's idea of what it meant to be a boy were in stark contrast now as a teacher I saw many students who were nearly the same as me or even more like me or even who had already decided they were the wrong gender which I never thought I was um, that they were the wrong that their their genitalia was the wrong genitalia for the way they felt inside I saw children like that as early as five years old expressing this and fortunately today we don't bully those kids I mean I was so afraid there was a little boy in my fifth grade class and I remember we were at recess which in my day was totally unsupervised which meant dangerous and he was talking about how he loved to play with dolls and I just kept thinking oh Lord please stop please stop you you can't say this in front of the other boys um, I wonder where he is today. Gosh, I wish I'd had the intestinal fortitude to be supportive, but I was trying to stay alive in my mind. Not something I'm proud of. Well, I hope I made you think. I don't think this has anything to do with sexual orientation particularly. I think there are a lot of men who would like to do things that have been ascribed to women. I find on the internet there are makeup channels for men now, which I'm all in favor of. I find that there's more and more fluidity and flexibility. Maybe at one time it was important that people have these really defined roles because it was imp important to the survival of the human race that we populate the planet, but we've accomplish that and we've done it very very well too well maybe so we don't have to things have changed our place as a species has changed and even I I found myself this summer um, there's someone who was formerly my student and she's 13 years old now and um, she's not particularly into makeup and I found myself trying to talk her into it and I thought what is wrong with you it, you know it, it was just I and I stopped and thought no 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 whatever you if you don't like makeup you don't like makeup good for you <laughs> so but it's so ingrained in me, maybe not so much in you, it's so ingrained in me that I have to be so vigilant. And in this year, 2015, when so many things are changing, even people in my age bracket are starting to look at these things differently and then to think about, I look back and I think, I knew people who were um, 
having sex change operations back in the early 70s who if they who maybe maybe if they'd had more options that wouldn't have been something necessary but it was really important to to find yourself as either male or female and you could there was no mixture you couldn't take from this place and this place and put it all together and just be yourself i'd love to have some dialogue with people about this do you think i'm just totally crazy am i a freak of nature <laughs> thank you so much for spending this time with me this one really meant a lot don't forget after the peace and joy part sita will be making an appearance in the video from the bottom of my heart i'd like to wish you peace and joy Don't make me drop my phone. <laughs>